1. Chapter 1. Dr. Evelyn Mark sat in her cluttered office, the soft hum of the overhead lights buzzing in the stillness. Bookshelves lined the walls, overflowing with volumes on cryptozoology, anthropology, and a host of other obscure subjects. This was her sanctuary, where the improbable became possible, and where she chased shadows on the fringes of science. Today, however, something had shattered that stillness. An envelope, yellowed with age and carelessly sealed, lay open on her desk. It had arrived that morning, slipped under her door without a word, and its contents had been gnawing at her since she first unfolded the single sheet of paper inside. The letter was handwritten in a careful, deliberate script, the kind that belonged to someone who had long ago mastered the art of patience. It was a dying art, she mused, as she scanned the note for what must have been the hundredth time that day. Underscore Dr. Marks blank, it began, blank, I have followed your work for many years, and I believe you are the only person who can help me. Enclosed are coordinates to a location deep in the Pacific Northwest, where I have discovered something that will change everything. The truth about Bigfoot is here. Come alone if you value discretion, underscore. There was no signature, no hint of who had sent it. But it was the photograph that accompanied the letter that had really captured her attention. A grainy black and white image of an enormous footprint embedded in the mud, the distinct shape unmistakable. It was larger than anything she had ever seen, larger even than the notorious casts she had collected over her years of searching. She leaned back in her chair, her mind a whirl of conflicting thoughts. The rational side of her, the part that had been honed by years of academic rigor and countless debunked hoaxes, screamed at her to dismiss it. But there was something about that photograph, something that reached into her soul and tugged at a curiosity she had long thought buried. It wasn't just the size of the footprint, it was the depth, the sheer force required to leave such an imprint in the earth. This wasn't the work of a clever prankster or an overzealous fan. This was something else entirely. Evelyn's eyes drifted to the map pinned to the wall beside her desk, dotted with red marks indicating sightings, encounters, and other anomalies over the years. The coordinates from the letter were from a region that had always been considered inhospitable, Dense forests, steep ravines, and few, if any, human inhabitants. It was the kind of place that could swallow you whole, leaving no trace behind. She felt the familiar pull, that irresistible lure of the unknown. It had been years since she'd felt it this strongly. There had been too many dead ends, too many disappointments. But this, this was different. This was a chance to finally prove what she had always believed that there were things out there, lurking in the shadows of our world, that defied explanation. She reached for her phone, her fingers hovering over the keypad. There was no way she could do this alone, not after all she'd learned about the dangers of the wild. She needed a team, people she could trust, people who wouldn't laugh her out of the room when she told them what they were really looking for. The first person she called was Jake Harper a wildlife biologist who had spent years tracking large predators through some of the most unforgiving terrains on Earth. Jake was a skeptic, the kind who didn't believe in anything he couldn't see with his own eyes, but he respected Evelyn's work, and more importantly, he owed her a favor. Evelyn, Jake's voice was gruff as always. This better be important. It is, she replied, no preamble. I need you on a trip. Somewhere remote, dangerous and I need you to trust me. There was a pause on the other end of the line, the kind of pause that signaled Jake was weighing his options. He was always careful, methodical in his decisions, and Evelyn could practically hear the gears turning in his head. Where and when, he finally asked. Evelyn allowed herself a small smile. The Pacific Northwest. We leave in three days. She heard a low whistle through the phone. You really aren't giving me much time to back out, are you? You won't want to once you hear what I've got, she said, a hint of mischief in her voice. But I'll explain everything in person. Just be ready. Next, she called Claire Rivers. If Jake was the muscle of the team, Claire was the brains. A tech-savvy tracker with a penchant for gadgets and a deep-seated love of the wilderness, Claire had been on more than a few wild goose chases with Evelyn in the past. 
She had a knack for finding things that didn't want to be found, and Evelyn needed that kind of skill now more than ever. Hey, Doc. Claire's voice was bright, cheerful. What's the scoop? I've got a lead on something big, Evelyn replied, keeping her tone light but serious. I'm putting together a team. You in? You know I'm always in, Claire said, no hesitation. Where are we headed this time? Somewhere deep and dark, Evelyn said, glancing again at the map. I'll send you the details. Just make sure you bring your best gear. Claire laughed. Always do. Can't wait to see what you've dug up this time. The last person on her list was Owen Grady, a man she'd met only once but had heard enough about to know he was the best choice for this kind of expedition. Owen was a survivalist, the kind who could disappear into the wilderness for weeks at a time and come back without a scratch. He was the insurance policy, the one who would make sure they all came back in one piece. She found his number in the contacts list of a mutual acquaintance, and after a few rings, a deep gravelly voice answered. Grady, he said, his voice as rough as sandpaper. Owen, this is Dr. Evelyn Marks. I was given your number by a friend of yours, said you were the man to call for a job like this. Depends on the job, Owen replied, not giving an inch. It's an expedition, Evelyn said, choosing her words carefully. A dangerous one into a part of the Pacific Northwest that most people would rather avoid. What's the catch? Owen asked, and Evelyn could tell he was already interested. It's a search, she said, leaning into her chair, for something that might not want to be found. There was a long silence, and Evelyn waited, letting him mull it over. Send me the details, Owen finally said, and make sure you know what you're getting into. I don't go on wild goose chases. Evelyn smiled. Neither do I. With her team assembled, Evelyn felt the first real stirrings of excitement. This was happening. It was real. The photograph, the letter, the coordinates, they all pointed to something extraordinary. Whether it was Bigfoot or not, she couldn't say, but she was determined to find out. She spent the next few days preparing, gathering supplies, poring over maps, and making sure every detail was accounted for. This wasn't just another expedition. This was the culmination of years of work, years of chasing a shadow that had always eluded her. On the morning of their departure, Evelyn met her team at a small private airstrip just outside of Seattle. The sun was just beginning to rise, casting a soft golden light over the landscape, and the air was thick with the promise of adventure. Jake was the first to arrive, his tall, lean frame silhouetted against the light. He nodded to Evelyn, his expression unreadable, but there was a hint of anticipation in his eyes. Claire followed soon after, her gear packed into a sleek black backpack that looked more suited for a covert military operation than a wilderness trek. She flashed Evelyn a grin as she approached. Ready to catch us a big one. Claire teased, adjusting the straps on her pack. More than ready, Evelyn replied, her voice steady. Let's just hope we're the hunters and not the hunted. Owen was the last to arrive, stepping out of a rugged, mud-splattered truck with the ease of a man who had nothing to prove. He was older than she'd remembered, his face weathered by years spent in the elements, but there was a calm confidence about him that reassured Evelyn she had made the right choice. Morning. Owen said simply, his eyes scanning the horizon as if already mapping out their route. Morning, Evelyn replied. We've got a long journey ahead of us. Owen nodded, but said nothing more. He was a man of few words, and Evelyn respected that. She knew he would speak when it mattered. With the sun fully risen, they boarded a small plane that would take them as far as the nearest logging camp. From there, it would be a trek on foot, deep into the heart of the wilderness where roads gave way to untamed forest. As the plane took off, Evelyn looked out the window, watching as the city faded into the distance, replaced by rolling mountains and endless stretches of green. It was beautiful, wild, and dangerous, just the way she liked it. This was the beginning of something big, she could feel it. The adventure of a lifetime, perhaps, or the biggest disappointment she'd ever faced. Whatever lay ahead, Evelyn knew one thing for certain, she was ready.
2. Chapter 2. The plane's propeller roared in the early morning light, cutting through the thick blanket of fog that clung to the mountainside. Dr. Evelyn Marks sat in the cramped seat, staring out at the vast expanse of wilderness below. The forest stretched out in every direction, a seemingly endless sea of green that swallowed everything in its path. As the plane began its descent, the wilderness grew larger, more imposing. The trees loomed like silent sentinels, their dark trunks and thick foliage hiding whatever secrets the forest might hold. Evelyn's heart pounded in her chest, a mix of anticipation and trepidation. This was it. They were heading into one of the last true wilds of the Pacific Northwest, a place where few dared to tread. Beside her, Jake Harper shifted in his seat, his eyes narrowed as he took in the landscape. Jake was a man who had seen more of the world's remote corners than most, and it took a lot to rattle him. But even he seemed on edge as they neared their destination. It's thicker than I thought, Jake muttered half to himself. Evelyn glanced at him, noting the tension in his jaw. It's going to be a challenge, she agreed, keeping her voice steady. But that's why we're here. Jake gave a curt nod, his expression unreadable. He wasn't one to shy away from a challenge, and Evelyn knew he'd be ready for whatever they encountered. Still, the tension in the plane's cabin was palpable. Claire Rivers sat across from them, her usual cheerful demeanor subdued as she focused on checking and rechecking her equipment. The small devices and gadgets she brought along were laid out meticulously, each one ready for use. Owen Grady sat in the rear of the plane, silent and watchful. He hadn't said much since they'd boarded, but that wasn't unusual for him. Owen was a man of few words, preferring action over conversation. His eyes were sharp, constantly scanning the horizon as if expecting something to emerge from the trees at any moment. As the plane touched down on a rough makeshift airstrip cut into the forest, Evelyn felt a jolt of adrenaline. The plane shuddered to a stop, and the door was flung open, letting in a rush of cool pine-scented air. She stepped out onto the dirt strip, her boots sinking slightly into the soft earth. The forest loomed around them tall and unyielding, the trees so dense they seemed to swallow the light. The small logging camp they had landed at was barely more than a cluster of wooden shacks, most of them abandoned and weathered by the elements. The air was thick with the scent of pine and damp earth, a reminder that civilization was miles away. A man emerged from one of the shacks, his clothes worn, and his face lined with years of hard living in the wilderness. He was the camp's foreman, a grizzled veteran of the logging industry who had agreed to help them reach the starting point of their trek. He looked them over with a critical eye, sizing them up in a way that suggested he wasn't sure they were up to the task. You folks sure you know what you're getting into, the foreman asked, his voice rough like gravel. This forest doesn't take kindly to outsiders. Evelyn met his gaze, her expression calm. We're aware of the risks, she said. That's why we've brought the best. The foreman grunted, not entirely convinced, but he didn't argue. He led them to a pair of battered trucks, the only vehicles that could navigate the rough terrain beyond the camp. The drive would take them as far as the old logging roads went, after which they'd be on foot. The journey was rough, the trucks bouncing and jostling over the uneven ground. They drove in silence, the forest growing denser with each passing mile. The logging roads were little more than overgrown trails, barely distinguishable from the surrounding wilderness. The deeper they went, the more it felt like the forest was closing in around them, its ancient trees towering overhead like dark sentinels. After what felt like hours, the trucks finally came to a halt at the edge of a clearing. The foreman climbed out, wiping sweat from his brow as he surveyed the area. This is as far as we go, he said, his tone flat. Beyond this point, it's just wilderness. No trails, no markers. You're on your own from here. Evelyn nodded, stepping out of the truck and stretching her stiff limbs. The rest of the team followed suit, each of them checking their gear with practiced efficiency. The air was cool and damp, the kind of chill that seeped into your bones if you stood still for too long. Jake unfolded a topographic map, spreading it out on the hood of the truck. The coordinates from the letter were marked in red, deep within the forest. It would be a long trek through rough and unpredictable terrain, but they were prepared for that. 
We'll head out at first light, Evelyn said, her voice firm. Set up camp here for the night and make sure we're ready. This isn't going to be an easy walk. Owen grunted in agreement, already unpacking his gear. Claire was less enthusiastic, but she masked her concern with a forced smile. Piece of cake, she quipped, though her eyes betrayed a hint of unease. They worked quickly, setting up their tents and preparing for the night ahead. The foreman stayed just long enough to make sure they were settled before he left, his departure marked by the distant rumble of the trucks fading into the trees. As night fell, the forest around them seemed to come alive. The sounds of the wilderness echoed through the trees, the rustle of leaves, the distant call of an owl, the occasional snap of a branch that made them all tense, wondering what might be lurking just beyond the firelight. Evelyn sat by the campfire, staring into the flames as they danced and flickered. The warmth was welcome, but it did little to ease the tension that had settled over the camp. She knew they were all feeling it, the sense that something was watching them just out of sight. You think there's anything out there? Claire asked, breaking the silence. Her voice was quiet, almost hesitant, as if she wasn't sure she wanted to hear the answer. Evelyn looked up, meeting Claire's gaze. I don't know, she admitted. But I intend to find out. Jake tossed another log onto the fire, sending a shower of sparks into the night sky. I've been in a lot of places like this, he said, his voice low. And I'll tell you one thing. Places like this, they don't give up their secrets easily. Owen nodded in agreement, though he said nothing. He was always the one who listened more than he spoke, his actions doing the talking for him. Evelyn appreciated that about him, especially now. They were heading into the unknown, and it wasn't just the forest they had to worry about. The letter, the footprint, it all pointed to something bigger, something they couldn't quite grasp yet. As the fire crackled and the night deepened, the weight of what lay ahead settled over them. This was just the beginning, the first step into a journey that would test them in ways they couldn't yet imagine. Evelyn pulled her jacket tighter around her, the cold seeping through despite the warmth of the fire. The forest loomed around them, dark and impenetrable, a living entity that seemed to breathe and watch with ancient eyes. She knew that whatever they found out here, it would change everything about their world, about what they believed and about themselves. The firelight flickered, casting long shadows that danced across the forest floor. The sounds of the night grew louder, more insistent, as if the wilderness itself was trying to communicate something, some secret it had held onto for far too long. Evelyn closed her eyes, letting the sounds wash over her, trying to find some sense of peace in the chaos. But there was none to be found. Only the anticipation of what was to come, and the knowledge that they were on the brink of something that could either be their greatest discovery or their ultimate downfall. As the others drifted off to their tents, Evelyn remained by the fire, keeping watch. The night was long and the darkness deep, but she knew that somewhere out there in the heart of this wild, untamed land lay the answer they were seeking. All they had to do was find it. 3. Chapter 3 Dawn broke slowly over the treetops, the first light of the day struggling to penetrate the dense canopy that loomed overhead. The air was thick with the scent of damp earth and pine, the forest alive with the quiet sounds of rustling leaves and the occasional distant call of a bird. The silence that accompanied the early morning was almost eerie, as if the forest itself was holding its breath, waiting. Evelyn Marks was already awake, crouched by the remnants of the fire, which had long since burned down to embers. Her eyes were on the tree line, scanning the shadows for any sign of movement. She hadn't slept much, the weight of the task ahead keeping her mind active even as her body begged for rest. The forest around them was still, too still, and that only served to heighten her sense of unease. Jake Harper emerged from his tent, his hair tousled and his face lined with fatigue. He moved with the careful precision of a man used to the wilderness, every step deliberate and quiet. He caught Evelyn's eye and gave a small nod, acknowledging the shared tension between them. Coffee, he asked, his voice low. Please, Evelyn replied, grateful for the offer. The warmth of the cup in her hands did little to soothe the unease that had settled in her stomach. She took a sip, the bitter liquid a welcome distraction. 
Claire Rivers was the next to rise, her movements slower and more deliberate. She stretched, wincing slightly as she worked out the kinks in her muscles. The wilderness was not her natural environment, but she had been determined to make the trip despite her discomfort. Now, with a day ahead looming, she seemed more apprehensive than ever. Rough night? Jake asked, offering her a cup of coffee as well. Claire nodded, her expression tight. I kept hearing things, she admitted, her voice barely above a whisper. I know it's probably just the wind, but... Evelyn understood. The forest was a living thing, its sounds and movements unpredictable and often unnerving to those not accustomed to it. But there was something more to the stillness here, something that made even the most seasoned among them uneasy. Owen Grady joined them last, his face impassive as he surveyed the camp. He was a man of few words, but his presence alone was reassuring. He moved with the confidence of someone who had spent a lifetime navigating dangerous terrain, his eyes sharp and alert. Let's get moving, Evelyn said, her voice firm. We've got a lot of ground to cover today. They packed up quickly, their movements efficient and practiced. There was no room for hesitation or second-guessing out here, not when the forest was so unforgiving. The air was cool and crisp as they set out, the sun barely visible through the thick canopy overhead. The terrain was rough, the ground uneven and covered in a thick layer of moss and fallen leaves. The trees loomed tall and ancient around them, their trunks thick with age, and their branches intertwined in a way that made the forest feel like a labyrinth. It was easy to get turned around in a place like this, where every direction looked the same, and the path ahead was obscured by shadows. Evelyn led the way, her eyes scanning the ground for any sign of the footprint they had come across before. It had been the catalyst for their journey, the piece of evidence that had finally convinced them that there was something out here worth finding. But the forest was vast, and the footprint had been an isolated clue, a tantalizing hint that could easily lead to nothing. Jake walked just behind her, his senses attuned to every sound and movement in the forest. He was the tracker, the one who could read the signs left behind by animals or anything else that might be out here. But even he seemed unsettled, his usual confidence tempered by the oppressive silence of the woods. Claire was quieter than usual, her eyes wide as she took in the surroundings. She was out of her element here, more comfortable with technology and data than the unpredictable wilderness. But she was determined, and Evelyn admired that, even if she worried about how Claire would handle the days to come. Owen brought up the rear, his rifle slung over his shoulder, his eyes constantly scanning their surroundings. He was the protector, the one who would make sure they all made it back in one piece. But even he seemed on edge, his usual calm demeanor strained by the weight of the forest around them. They walked in silence for what felt like hours, the forest closing in around them with every step. The further they went, the more the path disappeared, swallowed up by the wilderness. The trees grew thicker, their branches intertwining above to create a canopy that blocked out the sun almost entirely. The light that filtered through was dim and muted, casting the forest in a perpetual twilight. Evelyn paused, her breath catching as she caught sight of something ahead. A break in the trees, a small clearing bathed in an eerie pale light. She motioned for the others to stop, her hand raised in a silent command. Jake moved up beside her, his eyes narrowing as he peered into the clearing. There was something off about it, something that made the hairs on the back of his neck stand up. The air was different here, colder, and the silence was even more pronounced. Evelyn took a cautious step forward, her heart pounding in her chest. The ground was soft beneath her feet, the moss thick and spongy. As she entered the clearing, she felt a strange sense of unease, as if she was intruding on something sacred. The clearing was small, barely more than a patch of open ground surrounded by towering trees. But it was what lay at its center that drew their attention. A massive tree, its trunk twisted and gnarled with age, stood alone in the middle of the clearing. Its branches stretched out like skeletal arms, and its bark was scarred with deep jagged marks. Evelyn moved closer, her breath catching in her throat. The marks were unmistakable long, deep gashes that could only have been made by something with immense strength. She reached out, her fingers brushing against the rough bark, feeling the deep grooves beneath her fingertips. 
What could have done this? Claire's voice was barely a whisper, her eyes wide with fear. Evelyn shook her head, her mind racing. The marks were too large to have been made by any animal she knew of, too deliberate to be the result of a storm or natural disaster. There was something deliberate about them, something that spoke of intelligence or malice. Whatever it was, it's strong, Jake said, his voice low. He ran a hand over the marks, his expression grim. And it's close. Owen's grip tightened on his rifle, his eyes scanning the tree line. The forest was silent, too silent, as if the very air was holding its breath. The unease that had settled over them earlier was now a palpable fear, a sense that they were being watched, hunted. Evelyn forced herself to take a step back, her mind racing. This was what they had come for, the evidence that something was out here, something powerful and dangerous. But now that they had found it, the reality of the situation was sinking in. They were deep in the wilderness, miles from any kind of help, and whatever had made those marks was still out there, watching. We need to keep moving, she said, her voice firm despite the fear that gnawed at her insides. We're not going to find anything if we stay here. Jake nodded, his jaw clenched. Claire hesitated, her eyes on the tree before finally stepping back. Owen was the last to leave the clearing, his gaze lingering on the marks, as if trying to memorize every detail. They continued on, the forest growing darker and more oppressive with every step. The silence was suffocating, broken only by the occasional rustle of leaves or the snap of a twig underfoot. Evelyn's mind was a whirlwind of thoughts, the fear that had been a dull throb now a sharp insistent pressure. They were getting closer to something, she could feel it. The air was thicker here, heavy with a sense of anticipation. Every shadow seemed to move, every rustle of leaves a potential threat. The forest was alive with a presence, something that watched them from the darkness waiting. As they pushed deeper into the wilderness, Evelyn's thoughts returned to the letter that had brought them here, the mysterious footprint that had set them on this path. She had been so certain that they were on the verge of a discovery, that they were about to uncover something that would change everything. But now, with the weight of the forest pressing down on her, she wasn't so sure. They pressed on, the light fading as the day wore on. The forest seemed to grow darker, the trees closing in around them, the path ahead obscured by shadows. Evelyn's heart pounded in her chest, her breath coming in short, sharp gasps. She forced herself to keep moving, to push through the fear that threatened to overwhelm her. But as they ventured further into the unknown, one thing became increasingly clear. Whatever was out here, it was no myth. And they were getting closer to it with every step. 4. Chapter 4 The air had taken on a biting chill as the sun slipped below the horizon, its last rays filtered through the thick canopy of trees, leaving the forest in a shroud of deepening shadows. It wasn't just the temperature that sent a shiver down Evelyn Mark's spine, it was the sense of being enveloped by the wilderness, swallowed by the vast, unyielding darkness that crept in from all sides. The group had settled into a makeshift camp, their tents nestled close together under the protective boughs of ancient pines. The flickering light of the campfire cast long dancing shadows that played tricks on the eyes, making the trees seem to shift and sway with a life of their own. Evelyn sat on a log near the fire, her hands cradling a tin cup of tepid coffee, her eyes fixed on the darkness just beyond the firelight. Jake Harper was pacing the perimeter of the camp, his senses alert to every rustle and crackle in the underbrush. He moved with the fluid grace of a predator, his eyes narrowed as they swept over the surrounding trees. He had been restless ever since they'd left the clearing, the unease that had gripped him there now manifesting as a constant tension in his posture, a readiness for something, anything to happen. Owen Grady sat across the fire from Evelyn, his rifle resting across his lap. He was cleaning the weapon with methodical precision, his movements slow and deliberate. His face was a mask of calm, but his eyes betrayed a flicker of concern, a sign that even he wasn't immune to the oppressive atmosphere of the forest. Claire Rivers sat beside Evelyn, her knees drawn up to her chest, her arms wrapped around them as if trying to ward off the cold. She stared into the flames, her mind clearly elsewhere, her thoughts spinning in a thousand different directions. She had been quiet ever since they'd set up camp, 
her usual confidence replaced by a growing sense of dread. Anyone else feel like we're being watched? Claire's voice broke the silence, brittle and uncertain. Evelyn didn't answer right away. She didn't need to. The feeling had been with her since they'd entered the forest, a constant prickling at the back of her neck, an awareness that something was out there in the darkness watching, waiting. She glanced over at Jake, who had paused in his pacing to listen, his head tilted slightly as if he, too, was trying to pick up on something just beyond their range of hearing. We're deep in the woods, miles from any civilization, Owen said, his voice steady, matter-of-fact. It's natural to feel a little on edge. But it wasn't just the distance from civilization that had Evelyn on edge. It was the feeling that the forest itself was alive, that it was more than just a collection of trees and undergrowth. It was as if the very ground beneath their feet was imbued with some ancient, unknowable power, a force that watched over the wilderness, keeping its secrets hidden from the world of men. Evelyn shook off the thought and forced herself to focus on the task at hand. They hadn't come all this way to be scared off by shadows and superstition. There was something out here, something real, and she intended to find it. Jake, she called softly, drawing his attention. What do you think? Jake stopped pacing and turned to face her, his expression unreadable in the dim light. I think we're getting closer, he said finally, his voice low and measured. Whatever made those marks on the tree, it's still out there. And I don't think it's far. Evelyn nodded, her mind already turning over the possibilities. The footprint they had found earlier, the marks on the tree, they were pieces of a puzzle that was slowly coming together. But there was still so much they didn't know, so much that was hidden in the shadows of the forest. We'll head out at first light, Evelyn said, her tone firm. We need to keep moving if we're going to find anything. Claire looked up at her, her eyes wide with apprehension. And if we do find something, what then? Evelyn didn't have an answer for that. The truth was, she didn't know what they would do if they actually came face to face with the creature they were hunting. They had all heard the stories, the legends, but none of them had ever truly believed they would find anything more than traces, evidence that could be explained away by natural phenomena. But now, with the forest closing in around them, the possibility of a real encounter seemed all too real. We'll deal with that when we get there, Jake said, his voice calm but resolute. He resumed his pacing, his gaze once again scanning the darkness beyond the firelight. The night deepened around them, the silence of the forest broken only by the occasional crackle of the fire and the distant call of an owl. The stars were hidden by the thick canopy above, leaving the world below in almost complete darkness. Evelyn found herself straining to listen, her ears picking up on every little sound, every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig. But it wasn't the sounds that unnerved her the most, it was the silences in between, the moments when the forest seemed to hold its breath, as if waiting for something to happen. It was during one of those silences that she heard it, a faint, distant echo that sent a chill down her spine. It was a sound unlike anything she had ever heard before a low guttural growl that seemed to vibrate through the very ground beneath her feet. The sound was distant, but it carried with it a sense of immense power, a force of nature that was both terrifying and awe-inspiring. Evelyn's heart raced as she exchanged a glance with Jake, who had gone completely still, his body tensed like a coiled spring. Owen had paused in his cleaning, his hand hovering over his rifle as he listened intently. Even Claire, who had been on the verge of dozing off, was now wide awake, her eyes wide with fear. What the hell was that? Claire whispered, her voice trembling. Evelyn didn't answer. She didn't need to. They all knew what it was, or at least what it could be. The sound had come from deep within the forest, far beyond the reach of their firelight, but it had been close enough to send a wave of fear through the entire group. Jake moved first, his hand going to the rifle slung over his shoulder. He didn't say a word, but the look in his eyes was enough to tell Evelyn that he was ready for whatever was out there. Owen was on his feet a moment later, his rifle at the ready, his face set in a grim expression. We need to move, Evelyn said, her voice low and urgent. We can't stay here. But it's the middle of the night, 
Claire protested, her fear evident in her voice. We can't just go wandering around in the dark. We don't have a choice, Jake said, his tone leaving no room for argument. Whatever made that sound, it's close. And I'd rather not be here when it decides to get any closer. Evelyn nodded in agreement, her mind already racing with possible routes and strategies. They needed to get moving, to put some distance between themselves and whatever was out there. The forest was dangerous enough in the daylight, at night it was a death trap. They packed up quickly, their movements hurried and tense. The fire was doused, the tents collapsed and stowed away in record time. Evelyn could feel the fear gnawing at the edges of her mind the primal instinct to flee, to get as far away from that sound as possible. But she forced herself to stay focused, to keep her thoughts clear and her actions deliberate. Jake led the way, his rifle held at the ready, his eyes scanning the darkness ahead. Owen took up the rear, his rifle also at the ready, his gaze constantly shifting from side to side as he watched for any signs of movement. Evelyn and Claire stayed close together in the middle their footsteps muffled by the thick layer of pine needles that carpeted the forest floor. The darkness was oppressive, the trees looming like shadowy sentinels on either side of the narrow path they followed. The only light came from the small, handheld lanterns they carried, their beams barely piercing the thick blackness that surrounded them. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig, sent a jolt of fear through the group, their nerves stretched to the breaking point. They had been walking for nearly an hour when they heard it again, that same low guttural growl, but this time it was closer, much closer. The sound seemed to reverberate through the forest, a deep primal rumble that sent a wave of terror through Evelyn's entire being. She stopped in her tracks, her heart pounding in her chest. The others halted as well, their breath coming in short sharp gasps as they strained to listen. The growl came again this time accompanied by the sound of something massive moving through the underbrush, the snap of branches, and the crunch of leaves underfoot. It's coming, Jake said, his voice tight with fear. Evelyn's mind raced, her thoughts a jumble of fear and determination. They couldn't outrun whatever was out there, not in the dark, not in this dense forest. They needed to find a place to make a stand, a place where they could defend themselves if it came to that. There, she said, pointing to a rocky outcrop just ahead. It wasn't much, but it offered some cover. A place where they could at least see whatever was coming before it got too close. They moved quickly, their fear driving them forward. The growl came again, even closer now, and Evelyn could hear the sound of heavy footsteps, the crack of branches as something massive moved through the trees. They reached the outcrop and huddled behind the rocks, their lanterns casting long shadows that danced across the forest floor. Jake and Owen took up positions on either side, their rifles trained on the darkness ahead. Evelyn and Claire crouched behind them, their hearts pounding in their chest. The forest was silent, the oppressive darkness pressing in from all sides. Evelyn could feel the tension in the air, the sense that something was about to happen, something that would change everything. She held her breath, her eyes fixed on the darkness beyond the rocks. And then, out of the shadows, it appeared. A massive figure, its form obscured by the darkness but its presence undeniable. It moved with a slow, deliberate grace, its massive limbs brushing aside branches as if they were nothing. The growl came again, low and rumbling, a sound that seemed to vibrate through the very ground beneath their feet. Evelyn's breath caught in her throat as she stared at the creature her mind struggling to comprehend what she was seeing. It was like nothing she had ever encountered before, a force of nature that defied explanation, a presence that seemed to belong to another world entirely. For a moment time seemed to stand still, the forest holding its breath as the creature stared back at them, its eyes glowing with an eerie light. Evelyn could feel the weight of its gaze, the immense power that radiated from it, a force that seemed to reach deep into her soul and hold her in place. And then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the creature turned and disappeared back into the darkness, its massive form swallowed up by the shadows. The growl faded into the distance, leaving only the oppressive silence of the forest behind. Evelyn let out a breath she hadn't realized she'd been holding, her body trembling with a mixture of fear and relief. She glanced at the others, their faces pale and drawn, their eyes wide with shock. What the hell was that? 
Claire whispered, her voice shaking. I don't know, Evelyn replied, her voice barely audible. But whatever it was, it's not done with us yet. 5. Chapter 5 The morning light filtered through the trees, a weak, pale illumination that did little to shake the night's terror from Evelyn's bones. The forest seemed different now, less inviting and more forbidding, as if the very trees themselves were conspiring to keep the group trapped in a maze of shadow and silence. Evelyn sat at the edge of the camp, her hands wrapped around a tin cup of coffee that had long since gone cold. She stared into the dying embers of the fire, her mind replaying the events of the previous night over and over again. The creature's eyes, glowing with that unearthly light, had been burned into her memory, a haunting reminder of just how close they had come to something beyond comprehension. Owen Grady was busy packing up the gear, his movements efficient but lacking their usual precision. He was rattled, no one could blame him for that. They all were. The tension hung heavy in the air, an invisible weight pressing down on the group, making every word, every movement feel deliberate and strained. Jake Harper was the only one who seemed unaffected. He stood a few yards away, staring out into the dense undergrowth, his rifle slung over his shoulder. There was a stillness about him that set Evelyn's nerves on edge, a quiet intensity that hinted at a mind working through a puzzle only he could see. We need to move. Jake said finally, his voice cutting through the silence like a knife. Whatever that thing was, it's still out there. And it's not going to let us walk away easily. Evelyn nodded, though her mind was far from made up. They'd come here looking for something, and now that they'd found it, or rather it had found them, there was a part of her that wanted to turn back, to leave the forest and never look back. But she knew that wasn't an option. Not for her, and not for the others. We need to be smart about this, Owen said, his voice tight with barely contained frustration. Last night was too close. We can't afford to be caught out in the open like that again. Claire Rivers, who had been unusually quiet all morning, looked up from where she was lacing her boots. Her eyes were bloodshot, dark circles visible beneath them. What if it's following us, she asked, her voice trembling. What if it's leading us somewhere? Jake didn't answer right away. He continued to stare into the forest, his eyes narrowed, as if he were trying to see something that wasn't there. We stick to the plan, he said finally. We head north, follow the stream until we hit the ridge. If we're lucky, we might find something that gives us an edge. An edge. Evelyn almost laughed at that. What kind of edge could they hope to find against something like the creature they'd seen? It was a force of nature, something beyond them, beyond their understanding. And yet, here they were, about to march deeper into the unknown, driven by a mixture of curiosity, fear, and the gnawing need for answers. The group moved out, their footsteps muffled by the thick carpet of pine needles underfoot. The forest was eerily quiet, the usual sounds of birds and insects absent, as if the entire wilderness was holding its breath. Evelyn kept her eyes on the ground, her mind focused on the task of putting one foot in front of the other. But no matter how hard she tried to push it away, the image of the creature's eyes, those glowing malevolent orbs, kept creeping back into her thoughts. The stream was a narrow, meandering ribbon of water that cut through the forest, its banks lined with thick underbrush and moss-covered rocks. It was the kind of place that would have been peaceful under different circumstances, but now it only added to the sense of unease that clung to the group. Jake led the way, his rifle at the ready, his eyes constantly scanning the surrounding trees. Owen followed close behind, his expression set in grim determination. Claire brought up the rear, her gaze darting nervously from side to side, as if she expected the creature to leap out at them at any moment. Evelyn stayed close to the center, her mind racing with thoughts of what lay ahead. She couldn't shake the feeling that they were being herded, pushed in a direction not of their choosing. The creature had revealed itself to them for a reason, and she feared that whatever that reason was, it wouldn't end well for any of them. They walked for hours, the forest closing in around them, the trees growing taller, their branches thicker, until the sky above was barely visible through the canopy. The stream twisted and turned, leading them deeper into the wilderness, 
and with each step, the tension in the group grew more palpable. It was Owen who first noticed the change in the air, a subtle shift, like a drop in temperature that made the hairs on the back of his neck stand on end. He held up a hand, signaling the group to stop, and they all froze in place, their senses on high alert. What is it? Evelyn whispered, her voice barely audible over the sound of the stream. Owen didn't answer right away. He crouched down, studying the ground around him, his eyes narrowed in concentration. After a moment, he looked up, his expression grim. Tracks, he said, his voice low and tense. Big ones. And they're fresh. Jake moved to where Owen was crouching, his eyes following the line of the tracks. They were deep, well-defined, the kind of prints that only something massive could leave behind. The sight of them sent a chill down Evelyn's spine. It's close, Jake said, his voice barely more than a whisper. They followed the tracks, their movements slow and deliberate, every step measured. The prints led away from the stream and into a dense thicket of trees, the undergrowth growing thicker, the air colder. The silence was oppressive, the only sound the crunch of their boots on the forest floor. The tracks eventually led them to a small clearing, a place where the trees had thinned out, allowing a sliver of sunlight to break through the canopy. In the center of the clearing, partially hidden by the tall grass, was a large weathered stone, its surface covered in moss and lichen. Jake motioned for the others to stay back as he approached the stone, his rifle at the ready. He crouched down, studying the ground around it, his eyes narrowing as he took in the scene. It's a marker, he said, his voice low and thoughtful. A sign, maybe. A sign of what? Claire asked, her voice tinged with fear. Jake didn't answer right away. He reached out and brushed some of the moss away from the stone, revealing a series of deep jagged marks etched into its surface. The marks were old, weathered by time and the elements, but their meaning was clear. This was a place of significance, a place where something had happened, something ancient and powerful. Evelyn felt a shiver run down her spine as she stared at the stone. There was something about it, something that felt wrong, as if it were a part of the forest but also separate from it, a relic of a time long past. The air around it felt charged, as if the very ground beneath their feet was humming with energy. Jake stood up, his eyes scanning the perimeter of the clearing. We need to be careful, he said, his voice tight with tension. This place, there's something here, something we don't understand. Owen nodded in agreement, his grip tightening on his rifle. We should move on. There's nothing for us here but trouble. But Evelyn wasn't so sure. The stone, the marks, there was a story here, a history that was calling out to her, begging to be understood. She could feel it in her bones, a deep, almost instinctual pull that urged her to stay, to uncover whatever secrets this place held. Before she could say anything, the silence of the clearing was shattered by a low, rumbling growl that seemed to come from all around them. The sound was deep, guttural, and filled with a primal rage that sent a wave of terror through the group. Jake spun around, his rifle at the ready, his eyes scanning the trees. Get ready, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. It's here. The growl came again, louder this time, closer. Evelyn's heart raced as she gripped the handle of her knife, her mind racing with thoughts of what could be out there, hidden in the shadows. The forest, which had seemed so silent and still just moments before, was now alive with the sound of something massive moving through the underbrush, something that was closing in on them with terrifying speed. And then, out of the darkness, it appeared. The creature was enormous, its massive frame towering above them as it stepped into the clearing. Its fur was matted and dark, blending in with the shadows, but its eyes, those glowing malevolent eyes, were unmistakable. Evelyn felt a scream rising in her throat, but it was caught there, trapped by the sheer terror that gripped her. The creature stood there, its gaze fixed on them, its breath coming in ragged, growling huffs that sent a shiver down her spine. Jake raised his rifle, his hand steady despite the fear that she knew must be coursing through him. Don't move, he said, his voice low and controlled. Nobody move. The creature let out a roar, a sound that seemed to shake the very earth beneath their feet. It was a sound filled with rage and power, a sound that spoke of an ancient primal force that was not to be trifled with. For a moment time seemed to stand still, the group frozen in place, their eyes locked on the creature. 
and then, with a speed that belied its massive size, the creature lunged forward, its massive hand sweeping down towards them with terrifying force. Evelyn barely had time to react. She threw herself to the side, hitting the ground hard as the creature's hand smashed into the spot where she had been standing just moments before. She rolled over, her heart pounding in her chest, and scrambled to her feet, her eyes wide with fear. The others were already on the move, diving for cover, their rifles raised as they prepared to defend themselves. The creature let out another roar, its massive body moving with a speed and agility that seemed impossible for something so large. Evelyn watched in horror as Jake fired a shot, the sound echoing through the clearing. The bullet struck the creature's shoulder, but it barely seemed to notice, its rage only intensifying as it charged towards him. Everything was chaos. The forest, once silent and still, was now a battleground. The air filled with the sounds of gunfire growls and the desperate cries of the group as they fought for their lives. Evelyn could barely think, her mind consumed by the need to survive, to escape the nightmare that had descended upon them. The creature moved with terrifying purpose, its eyes glowing with an unholy light, its growls filling the air with the promise of violence and death. 6. Chapter 6 The sun was sinking lower in the sky, casting long shadows over the dense forest as the group trudged onward. Every step felt like a battle against the weight of exhaustion and the memory of the encounter with the creature. It was still out there, somewhere, watching them, waiting for the right moment to strike again. The knowledge gnawed at Evelyn's mind, fraying the edges of her sanity as they pressed deeper into the wilderness. They hadn't spoken much since leaving the clearing. There wasn't much to say, really. Words seemed inadequate in the face of what they'd experienced. The creature's raw power and terrifying speed had shattered any illusions of control they might have had. Now, they were simply trying to survive, to make it out of this godforsaken forest in one piece. Jake led the way, his rifle held at the ready, his eyes scanning the trees with a cold, calculated focus. He hadn't said anything since the attack, his usual grim determination hardening into something colder, more dangerous. Evelyn watched him from a few paces behind, her thoughts swirling with fear and confusion. She couldn't shake the feeling that Jake was on the verge of something, some realization or decision that would change everything. Owen and Claire followed closely behind, their faces drawn and pale. Owen had taken the brunt of the creature's assault, his arm bloodied and bandaged, but his spirit hadn't broken. If anything, he seemed more resolute, as if the near-death experience had only solidified his resolve to see this through to the end. Claire, on the other hand, was unraveling. Her usual calm demeanor was gone, replaced by a nervous, jittery energy that made her jump at every snapping twig and rustling leaf. Evelyn couldn't blame her. They were all on edge, their nerves stretched thin by the constant threat of attack. The forest was growing darker by the minute, the thick canopy of leaves blotting out the last remnants of daylight. The path ahead was little more than a narrow trail winding through the trees, its edges lined with thick underbrush that seemed to close in around them like a living thing. We need to find shelter, Owen said, breaking the silence at last. His voice was strained, his breath coming in short shallow gasps. It's not safe to keep moving in the dark. Jake didn't respond immediately. He kept walking, his gaze fixed ahead, as if he were searching for something just beyond the edge of sight. Finally he spoke, his tone flat and unyielding. We're close? Close to what? Evelyn asked, her voice low. She was trying to keep the tremor out of it, trying to hold on to whatever scrap of courage she had left. Jake paused, turning to face the group. The light was fading fast, but in the dim twilight, she could see the hard lines of his face, the intensity in his eyes. There's a place up ahead, an old cabin. We can hole up there for the night, get some rest. A cabin? Claire echoed, her voice tinged with disbelief. Out here. Jake nodded. It's been abandoned for years. Used to be a hunting lodge or something. It's not much, but it'll give us some cover. How do you know about it? Evelyn asked. Her curiosity peaked despite the situation. Jake hesitated for a moment, then sighed. I've been out here before. Years ago. 
back when I was younger, and thought I could take on the world. We stumbled across it one night after getting lost. Never thought I'd see it again. Owen frowned but nodded. Better than spending the night out here. Let's move. They followed Jake in silence, the darkening forest pressing in around them. The trail wound upward, the terrain growing steeper and more treacherous as they climbed. Evelyn's legs ached with every step, her breath coming in ragged gasps. But she pushed on, driven by a combination of fear and determination. She wasn't going to let the creature catch them out in the open again. The trail eventually led them to the base of a rocky outcrop, a sheer wall of stone that jutted up from the forest floor like the spine of some ancient beast. The air here was cooler, the trees thinner, as if they were entering a different world entirely. Jake stopped at the foot of the rock face, his gaze scanning the area. It's just up there, he said, pointing to a narrow ledge that wound its way around the side of the outcrop. We'll have to climb. Evelyn stared up at the ledge, her heart sinking. It was narrow, barely wide enough for one person, and the drop below was steep and unforgiving. But there was no other option. They had to keep moving, had to find shelter before nightfall. Owen went first, his strong hands finding purchase on the rough stone as he pulled himself up. Claire followed, her movements shaky and hesitant, but she made it. Evelyn was next, and she forced herself to focus on each step, each handhold willing her body to obey despite the fear gnawing at her insides. Jake brought up the rear, his presence a reassuring weight at her back. He was like a shadow, always there, always watching, ready to catch her if she slipped. They reached the ledge and began to make their way around the outcrop, moving slowly and carefully. The wind had picked up, whipping at their clothes and sending chills down Evelyn's spine. But they pressed on, the promise of shelter spurring them forward. Finally, they rounded a bend, and the cabin came into view. It was a small, weathered structure, half hidden by the trees and the shadows of the rock face. The roof sagged in places, and the windows were dark and empty, like the eyes of a long dead animal. But it was a roof over their heads, and that was all that mattered. Jake approached the cabin cautiously, his rifle raised. The door was ajar, hanging crookedly on its hinges, and as he pushed it open, it creaked loudly the sound echoing in the stillness. Inside, the cabin was as dilapidated as it looked from the outside. The floor was covered in a thick layer of dust, and the air was heavy with the smell of mold and decay. A few broken pieces of furniture lay scattered about, an overturned chair, a table missing one leg, a rusted stove in the corner. It's not much, Jake said, lowering his rifle. But it'll do for the night. Owen moved to the fireplace, checking to see if it was still functional. We can start a fire, get some warmth in here, he said, his voice betraying a hint of relief. Maybe even cook something if we've got the supplies. Claire collapsed onto one of the less damaged chairs, her hands trembling as she pulled her jacket tighter around herself. I just want to sleep, she muttered, her voice barely above a whisper. I'm so tired. Evelyn understood the feeling all too well. She felt like she could sleep for days, just close her eyes and drift away from this nightmare. But she knew they couldn't afford to let their guard down. Not here, not now. Jake moved to one of the windows, peering out into the growing darkness. We'll take turns keeping watch, he said, his tone leaving no room for argument. This place might be better than nothing, but it's not safe. Not by a long shot. Owen nodded in agreement as he began gathering some of the scattered wood to start a fire. We should be okay for the night if we stay alert. First light, we head out. Evelyn stood by the door, her thoughts racing. She couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched, that the creature was out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. The cabin might have provided some temporary respite, but it was still a cage, a fragile, crumbling cage in the middle of nowhere. As Owen coaxed the fire to life, the warmth and light slowly filling the small space, Evelyn forced herself to sit down on the floor, her back against the wall. She needed to think, to clear her mind, and focus on what they were going to do next. Jake stayed by the window, his gaze fixed on the darkness outside. The firelight cast long shadows across his face, highlighting the hard angles and the lines of tension that had been carved into his features. 
He was a man on a mission, driven by something deeper than fear, something that bordered on obsession. Evelyn knew she should rest, should try to regain some of the strength she'd lost in the day's ordeals. But sleep felt impossible with the memory of the creature still fresh in her mind. The way it had moved, the way it had looked at them, it was more than just an animal. It was something ancient, something that didn't belong in their world. Jake, she said softly, her voice breaking the heavy silence. What are we really doing here? What's the point? He didn't turn away from the window, didn't even acknowledge that he'd heard her at first. But after a long moment he finally spoke, his voice low and steady. We're here to find out the truth, Evelyn. That's all. The truth about what's out there, and why it's been hidden for so long. And what if the truth is something we can't handle? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Jake finally turned to face her, his eyes locking onto hers with an intensity that made her heart skip a beat. Then we deal with it. Whatever it is, whatever it takes. We don't stop. Until we know. His words hung in the air like a challenge, a dare. Evelyn felt a shiver run down her spine, but she didn't look away. She didn't back down because deep down she knew he was right. They had come this far, risked everything, and there was no turning back now. The truth was out there, waiting for them in the dark. And they had no choice but to face it, no matter the cost. The fire crackled in the hearth, its light casting flickering shadows on the walls. Outside, the wind howled through the trees, carrying with it the distant, haunting cry of a creature that should not exist. 7. Chapter 7 The dawn crept in slowly, its pale light filtering through the cracks in the cabin walls. Jake was the first to stir, his eyes opening to the faint orange glow that signaled the start of a new day. But there was no warmth in that light, no comfort. It was just another reminder that time was moving forward, pushing them inexorably toward a confrontation with whatever lay in wait in the depths of the forest. Evelyn was already awake, sitting by the dying embers of the fire. She hadn't slept much, none of them had, but she felt strangely alert, as if her senses had been sharpened by the fear that had gripped her all night. She looked over at Jake, meeting his gaze for a brief moment before turning away. There was something in his eyes that unnerved her, something that spoke of a man on the edge of something dangerous. Claire was still curled up in one corner of the cabin, her breathing shallow and uneven. She'd been quiet ever since they'd holed up here, retreating into herself, as if trying to shut out the world. Evelyn had tried to talk to her, to offer some reassurance, but Claire had only nodded absently, her eyes distant and unfocused. Owen was the last awake, groaning softly as he pushed himself up from the floor. His arm was still bandaged, the makeshift dressing stained with dried blood. He winced as he moved, but there was a grim determination in his expression. Whatever pain he was feeling, he was pushing it aside, burying it beneath the same resolve that had driven him this far. We should get moving, Jake said, breaking the silence. His voice was rough, like gravel scraping against stone. The sooner we're out of this place, the better. Evelyn nodded in agreement, though the thought of venturing back into the forest filled her with dread. She stood up, brushing the dust from her clothes, and began packing up what little gear they had. The air inside the cabin was heavy, oppressive, and she could feel the weight of the previous day's events pressing down on her, threatening to suffocate her. Jake moved to the door, peering outside. The forest was still, bathed in the muted light of early morning. There was no sign of movement, no indication that the creature was nearby. But that didn't mean it wasn't out there, lurking just beyond the edge of sight, waiting for them to let their guard down. We head east. Jake said, his tone leaving no room for argument. Stick together, keep quiet, and stay alert. We're not out of the woods yet. Owen nodded, slinging his pack over his shoulder. Let's do this. Claire hesitated, glancing at Evelyn with wide, fearful eyes. Do we really have to go back out there? What if, what if it's waiting for us? Evelyn moved to her side, placing a reassuring hand on her arm. We'll be okay, Claire. We just need to stay focused and keep moving. We'll find a way out of here. Claire nodded, but her expression remained uncertain. She stood up slowly, 
her movements stiff and awkward, as if her body was resisting the idea of leaving the relative safety of the cabin. They stepped outside, the cold morning air hitting them like a slap in the face. The forest was eerily quiet, the usual sounds of birds and insects conspicuously absent. It was as if the entire world was holding its breath, waiting for something to happen. Jake took the lead, his rifle held at the ready as he moved with a deliberate measured pace. Evelyn followed close behind, her heart pounding in her chest. She kept her eyes on the ground, watching for any sign of the creature's tracks, but the forest floor was undisturbed, covered in a thin layer of fallen leaves and pine needles. They walked in silence, the tension between them palpable. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig, sent a jolt of fear through Evelyn's body. She kept glancing over her shoulder, half expecting to see the creature barreling toward them, its massive form crashing through the underbrush. But there was nothing, just the endless expanse of trees stretching out in every direction. As they moved deeper into the forest, the terrain became more rugged, the ground sloping downward into a narrow ravine. The air grew colder, the light dimmer, as if they were descending into some forgotten abyss. The trees here were taller, their branches intertwining to form a dense canopy that blocked out most of the sunlight. Jake led them along a narrow path that wound its way through the ravine, the walls of rock on either side pressing in on them like the jaws of a massive beast. The path was treacherous, the ground uneven and covered in loose stones that threatened to send them tumbling at any moment. Evelyn's breath came in short, shallow gasps, as she struggled to keep up with Jake's relentless pace. Her legs ached, her muscles burning with the effort of climbing over rocks and roots. But she pushed on, driven by a mixture of fear and determination. She couldn't afford to fall behind, not here, not now. They reached a small clearing at the bottom of the ravine, a patch of open ground surrounded by towering cliffs. Jake stopped, his gaze scanning the area with a wary intensity. Evelyn could see the tension in his posture, the way his fingers tightened around the stock of his rifle. We're close, he muttered, almost to himself. Close to what? Owen asked, his voice low and wary. Jake didn't answer right away. He took a step forward, his eyes narrowing as he focused on something in the distance. Evelyn followed his gaze, squinting against the dim light. There, at the far end of the clearing, Partially hidden by the shadows of the cliffs was a cave. It was small, barely more than a dark opening in the rock, but there was something about it that sent a chill down Evelyn's spine. The entrance was jagged and uneven, as if it had been clawed out of the stone by some massive, powerful force. Jake moved toward the cave, his movements slow and deliberate. The rest of them followed, their footsteps echoing in the stillness of the ravine. Evelyn's heart was pounding in her ears, her throat tight with fear. She didn't want to go any closer, didn't want to know what lay inside that dark, foreboding space. But she couldn't stop herself. Something was drawing her forward, compelling her to face whatever horrors awaited them. They reached the entrance to the cave, and Jake peered inside, his expression unreadable. The air that wafted out was cool and damp, carrying with it the faint scent of decay. It was as if the cave itself was breathing, exhaling the foul odor of something ancient and long dead. This is it, Jake said, his voice barely above a whisper. This is where it's been hiding. Owen frowned, glancing at the dark interior of the cave. How do you know? Jake didn't answer immediately. He took a step back, his grip on the rifle tightening. I just do. Evelyn swallowed hard, trying to steady her nerves. What do we do now? We go in, Jake said simply, his tone leaving no room for debate. This is what we came here for. To find it to end this. Claire's eyes widened in fear. You can't be serious. We don't even know what's in there. What if? Jake cut her off with a sharp glance. We know enough. We know it's out there, and we know it's dangerous. If we don't do something now, it's going to keep hunting us, picking us off one by one. This is our only chance to end it. Evelyn could see the determination in his eyes, the cold, unyielding resolve that had driven him this far. There was no turning back now. They had come too far, seen too much. Whatever was in that cave, they had to face it, together. 
Owen nodded slowly, his expression grim. All right. Let's finish this. They gathered at the entrance, their flashlights cutting through the darkness as they prepared to enter the cave. The air was thick with tension, each of them acutely aware that this could be the last thing they ever did. Jake led the way, his flashlight beam slicing through the blackness. The cave walls were rough and uneven, the floor sloping downward into the earth. The light flickered off jagged rocks and twisted formations, casting eerie shadows that danced along the walls. Evelyn followed close behind, her heart racing. She could hear the sound of her own breathing, shallow and quick, echoing off the stone. The darkness seemed to press in around her, suffocating, as if the cave itself were alive, drawing them deeper into its depths. The tunnel wound downward, narrowing as they went. The air grew colder, the smell of decay stronger. Every step felt like a descent into madness, the weight of the earth above them pressing down, threatening to crush them. Jake moved with a single-minded focus, his flashlight cutting through the gloom. He didn't hesitate, didn't slow down, as if he were being drawn forward by some unseen force. They reached a wider chamber, the walls opening up into a larger space. The ceiling was high, disappearing into the darkness above, and the floor was uneven, littered with rocks and debris. Evelyn's flashlight swept across the chamber, and she froze, her blood turning to ice. There, in the center of the room, was a massive, shadowy figure. It was hunched over, its back to them, but there was no mistaking its size, its shape. The creature's skin was dark and rough, covered in matted hair. Its breathing was deep and ragged, a low rumble that echoed through the chamber. For a moment, time seemed to stop. Evelyn's heart pounded in her chest, her mind racing. This was it, the creature they had been searching for, the thing that had haunted their nightmares. Jake raised his rifle, his hand steady. Get ready, he whispered, his voice tense with anticipation. Evelyn held her breath, her fingers tightening around the grip of her flashlight. The creature shifted, its massive shoulders rising and falling with each breath. It hadn't noticed them yet, hadn't turned to face them. They still had the element of surprise. Jake took a step forward, his movement slow and deliberate. His finger hovered over the trigger, ready to fire. Evelyn's heart was in her throat, her entire body trembling with fear and adrenaline. And then the creature turned. 8. Chapter 8 The forest seemed to swallow them whole as they stumbled out, the towering trees bending with the weight of the secrets they carried. They emerged from the dark embrace of the wilderness like survivors of a shipwreck, clinging to fragments of a reality that had shifted beneath their feet. The air was thick with the scent of damp earth and decay, a reminder that the forest would soon reclaim any trace of their passage. They were battered, bruised, and broken in ways that went deeper than the flesh. Their bodies bore the scars of the struggle, but their minds carried something far heavier, knowledge. Or perhaps it was doubt. Jake led the way, his steps heavy, his eyes fixed on the ground. His rifle, once held with purpose, now hung limply at his side, a useless appendage. He hadn't fired a single shot. The creature had turned, and in that moment, the certainty that had driven him for years had evaporated. He had seen it, had looked into its eyes, and in that brief, terrible instant, he had known that pulling the trigger would change nothing. The wilderness had bared its teeth, and he had seen the ancient power that lay within. Evelyn walked beside him, her face pale her breath coming in short ragged gasps. She clutched her flashlight like a lifeline, though it had long since flickered out. The image of the creature was seared into her mind, every detail as vivid as if it were still standing before her. It had turned, and she had seen the intelligence in its eyes, the awareness that transcended mere animal instinct. She had felt its gaze pierce through her, a look that seemed to ask why. Behind them, the others followed, their expressions blank, their movements mechanical. They were like ghosts, lost in a fog of disbelief and denial. Carter's face was a mask of exhaustion, his eyes hollow, his hands trembling. He had been the skeptic, the one who had refused to believe in the legend. But now he was left with nothing but questions, questions that gnawed at him like the chill of the forest air. They reached the edge of the tree line, where the dense foliage gave way to the open sky. The sun was setting, casting long shadows across the landscape, 
painting the world in shades of orange and red. It was beautiful, in a way that felt almost obscene after what they had witnessed. The world continued to turn, indifferent to the horrors they had uncovered. The wind whispered through the trees, carrying with it the last echoes of their fear. They paused, as if crossing the threshold from forest to field was a final, irreversible step. Jake turned to look back at the darkened woods, his jaw clenched. The forest loomed behind them, a living, breathing entity that had tested them and found them wanting. He wondered if it was the forest itself that had conjured the creature, if it was some manifestation of the wilderness's ancient, untamed power. The thought unsettled him, made him question everything he had believed in. Evelyn broke the silence, her voice barely a whisper. What do we do now? Jake didn't answer right away. He looked at her, saw the fear in her eyes, the uncertainty. He had no answers for her, no comforting words. What they had seen, what they had experienced, defied explanation. The creature was real, as real as the forest that had birthed it. But what did that mean? How could they reconcile the myth with the reality? How could they share what they had seen without sounding like madmen? We go back, Jake finally said, his voice rough. We go back and we live with it. Evelyn stared at him, her brows furrowing. Live with it. Just like that. He nodded, though he wasn't sure he believed it himself. There's nothing else we can do. But what about the evidence? Carter asked, his voice shaking. We have the footage that tracks the samples. We can prove it, Jake. We can show the world. Jake shook his head, a bitter smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. And what would that change? People will see what they want to see. They'll call it a hoax, a trick of the light, a man in a suit. And even if they do believe us, what then? The forest won't give up its secrets so easily. It's been hiding them for centuries. What makes you think we can expose them now? Carter opened his mouth to argue, but the words died in his throat. He knew Jake was right. The world wasn't ready for the truth, and maybe, just maybe, neither were they. The truth had a way of twisting itself, becoming something else entirely in the telling. What they had seen, what they had experienced, was theirs and theirs alone. The world could keep its myths, its legends. The reality was far more terrifying. Evelyn exhaled slowly, her shoulders sagging. So, what do we do with the footage? The samples. Jake glanced at her, then at the others. He saw the weariness in their eyes, the resignation. We keep them, he said. We hold on to them. Maybe someday, we'll be ready to share what we've found. But not now. Not yet. They stood in silence for a moment longer, each lost in their thoughts. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting the world into twilight. The forest behind them seemed to breathe, a sigh of relief that the intruders were finally leaving. The night would come, and with it, the darkness that held the forest's deepest secrets. Jake turned away from the tree line and started walking, his steps deliberate, his gaze fixed on the distant lights of civilization. The others followed, their footsteps heavy, their minds still tangled in the web of what they had seen. They walked in silence, the weight of the truth pressing down on them like a leaden blanket. As they approached the small, weathered cabin that had served as their base, the reality of what they had to do began to settle in. They would return to their lives, carrying with them the memories of the forest, the creature, the terror. But they would carry something else as well, a question that would haunt them for the rest of their days. Was the creature real, or had they seen only what the forest had wanted them to see? The cabin door creaked open, and they filed inside, the warmth of the fire doing little to thaw the chill that had settled into their bones. They sat in a circle, the firelight casting flickering shadows on the walls, their faces etched with the weariness of the ordeal. No one spoke. There was nothing left to say. Jake leaned back in his chair, staring into the flames. The creature's eyes haunted him, those dark, knowing eyes that had looked into his soul. He wondered if the creature was out there now, watching them from the shadows, waiting for the night to fall. The thought sent a shiver down his spine, but he pushed it aside. There was no going back. The forest had claimed its due, and they had barely escaped with their lives. Evelyn broke the silence, 
her voice barely audible. Do you think we'll ever go back? Jake didn't answer right away. He thought about the forest, the creature, the terror that had gripped him when it had turned to face them. He thought about the evidence they had collected, the samples, the footage. It would all sit in a box somewhere, gathering dust, a reminder of a truth too terrible to share. I don't know, he said finally. Maybe someday. She nodded, her eyes distant. But not now. No, Jake agreed. Not now. The fire crackled, the sound filling the silence. The night outside was still, the forest quiet. The world continued to turn, indifferent to the secrets hidden in the wilderness. The creature was out there, a part of the forest, a part of the mystery that would never be fully understood. They had seen it, had looked into its eyes, and they would carry that knowledge with them for the rest of their lives. But the world would never know.